to show the circle of Willis uh, and how blood is distributed to the brain. <clears throat> and on the circle of Willis, you've actually got four main arteries heading towards the brain. You've got the two internal carotid arteries here and the two basal, uh, two, excuse me, not basal, the two vertebral arteries here. Remember, the vertebral arteries are those going within the transverse foramina of the um, cervical vertebrae. And so the two vertebrals enter the skull in anastomose into this basilar. Okay? And the basilar goes up vertical and bifurcates into the two posterior cerebrals. And these two posterior cerebrals uh, get the um, blood to the occipital lobes. Okay? And while I'm doing this, Janet, would you grab that other wire model that's sitting with those limbs back there and bring it up? Okay, and, and so this uh, posterior cerebral brings up to the uh, occipital lobes. Each carotid each carotid, internal carotid, comes up and it also bifurcates. And it bifurcates into an anterior cerebral that goes forward for the frontal lobes and a middle cerebral that comes out for the um, temporal and parietal lobes. Okay? And so with just those vessels, you have plenty of blood to the brain. Okay? What has been added are these and this into these bifurcating vessels. And what's been added, if I take that same model and modify it like so, okay, what's been added are these three vessels that I've got color-coded yellow here. See, the posterior cerebrals are also fed not only from the basilar, but they're tied into the Inter internal carotid, aren't they? And so the posterior cerebrals can get blood from the, anterior, uh, from the internal carotid, part of a failsafe, anastomosis. So there's three posterior cerebrals? Two. Here, uh, but there's two posterior cerebrals, and there's two posterior communicatings, these added vessels, that provide this circulatory route. Okay. So there's posterior communicating. The posterior communicating, what about? That's just their name. There's two posterior communicatings, the right and the left. Uh -huh. And they tie the, the carotid, internal carotid, to the posterior cerebral, forming the back half of this circle. Oh, you call that the middle cerebral, this is the middle cerebral artery here. Okay. But see, the middle cerebral artery comes off the very top of the internal carotid, and the posterior communicating comes off just a little bit lower on that carotid. Just a tiny bit lower. Also, the two anterior cerebrals have a little tiny short artery connecting between them. And that little anterior cerebral connecting between them, okay, does it show better that way? Okay, the anterior cerebrals have this anterior communicating artery between them, and that completes the circle. So now you can occlude all, all you need for a functional brain is any one of these blood supplies to be working. And if any one of these blood supplies is working, you can get enough blood up into this circle that it can go any direction, whatever the pressure tells it to go, high to low, around and get blood out to the entire brain. And so that's what these yellow things are here. These three communicating arteries tie together the basic circulation leading into the brain. So when you say the two carotid are blocked and you go the vertebral to the basilar instead. Okay. Pardon? No. Okay. Let me explain. Okay, if I put this up like here, you can see that better now? So again, we can see the posterior communicating, the anterior communicating, the complete a circle, making a more fail-safe circulatory pattern to the brain. Okay, I'll ask. So, ask. Okay, so you know... If you say both carotids are blocked, you Down have here. to go up through one of the vertebral up to the basilar 
go yeah. through the communication. If these two carotids were blocked, you would have to come up the vertebrals to the basilar, to the posterior cerebrals, to the communicatings, to the internal carotid, there's a little piece of it here, and then to the uh, middle cerebrals or anterior cerebrals to get where the blood has to go, right? Make sense? To, to go to the frontal lobe, you'd come up the anterior cerebrals. You'd have to get there, yeah. Those internal carotids. Where, where are those in the head? The internal carotids end right here. But where are they in relation? They're not a big, they're not a big They end right on the side of the cella turcica, in the skull. Right on each side of the cella turcica, uh, these, these um, internal carotids terminate, and then the blood has to go through middle cerebral, anterior cerebral. Okay? The other detail in the Cerebral circulation is shown by this model. That work? Okay. And this one shows the dural sinuses. Okay. And <clears throat> to get the blood out of the brain, okay, it's all going to be collected together and leave down here. And these are the jugular veins, the external jugular vein. In Internal jugular veins, I'm sorry. These are the internal jugular veins. And so, superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus. They join, uh, well, then there's a straight sinus here in the great vein of Galen. So the blood from the inferior sagittal sinus and the great vein of Galen goes into the straight sinus, which joins with the superior sagittal sinus. And then that blood goes out through the transverse sinus to get to the side of the skull, goes through an S-shaped sigmoid sinus to get into the jugular vein. And you saw when you were studying the skull that groove inside where the sigmoid sinus fit going right over to that uh, jugular foramen where the jugular left the skull. The added portion in here you have right around the cella turcica, cella turcica sitting right inside here, right around the cella turcica, you have the cavernous sinus, which is a network of blood sinuses that drains through two sinuses to the sigmoid. And the sinuses are named by their location. The temporal bone has that petrous portion inside the skull, and here's the superior petrous and inferior petrous sinus. And they're, they're draining uh, to the sigmoid sinus. And this is the way the blood gets all out of your brain. So are those the jugular? These are the jugular veins they, here. They go down in your neck? They go down in your neck. These are the jugulars that you see out here. Those okay. are internal jugular or external jugular? Uh, internal. External is a little tiny guy. And, the, and, and there's a lot of variation in people. In some people, uh, the external goes all the way down separate to the subclavian. And in some people, it joins into the internal and forms a common jugular. And so there'll be some variation. Where does that run into? Anastomosis. It anastomoses somewhere inch or two superior to the uh, uh, subclavian, where the subclavian and the jugular f join together to form the brachiocephalic. What were the... That's the end of the review, and I just wanted to point out as we're closing it off now that these things are representative of what's on the exam. It doesn't include everything. There's other models and such that we should be looking at in lab. So uh, don't just concentrate and rely totally on this film. You have to also realize that there are other models and, and uh, other things that we have studied in class that did not get on the film. Thanks. I hope this really helped. Bye.